Hey, what's up guys, John here. America is about to go through a very, very concerning time. A few things that are happening that I think a lot of people need to pay attention to. Jerome Powell just increased interest rates today a quarter basis point, quarter basis point. He committed to seven more hikes in 2022. That came from his mouth today at his announcement. Seven more hikes. People will say, well, we need to increase hikes. We need to pull back into the economy. The economy is overheating. But there's a couple things that are happening right now that I think real concern should be allocated. One is what's happening in China. China, their economy is starting to close back up. And if we look at the supply chain problems, what are we seeing? We're seeing a lot of empty shelves and we're seeing increased prices. Why is that? Well, if there's more money in the system than there is available products, people are gonna pay more for that product because they simply would rather have the product than have the, have the capital, the liquidity, right? Well, if China is stepping into an environment where they're starting to close things back up again and there's so much money in the system, what will happen is that people are gonna spend more and more and more to get that product, right? That's what's gonna happen. We're gonna see more inflation. That's where we're going right now, is an inflationary environment. Jerome Powell and the Fed, they believe that they have this under wraps and they can simply just reel it in and out as they see fit. I believe that they don't have as much power as they think they do. And I think that America is losing its place as the dominant country. We are seeing Saudi Arabia now in discussions with China to do a massive oil deal in the yuan. What would that mean? That would mean that they're stepping away from the dollar as a reserve currency for this transaction, potentially future other transactions. And what that would mean is that the relationship between Saudi Arabia and China, potentially India and Russia, could all be done maybe in yuan. We don't know, but it's definitely not a good sign for America. What we've also seen is that a lot of other countries have been expanding over the last couple of years. Meanwhile, America has been contracting and we have rising oil prices. What we're going to be seeing is going to be more expensive times. And as they increase rates, what, how does that impact the consumer? Well, over the last two years, most consumers, a lot of Americans had a hard time finding jobs. A lot of Americans stacked a lot of debt and a lot of Americans acquired you know, things that maybe they didn't need, maybe a luxury car, maybe, you know, they just came into money because they maybe were working under the table, maybe they had unemployment, maybe they got a PPP loan, whatever it is, they got some money and then they went out, they spent it, acquired debt, and, uh, and now that debt's gonna get more and more and more expensive. When I say debt, I mean credit cards. Credit card debt is gonna get more expensive. Auto loans are gonna get more expensive. Home equity lines of credit, adjustable mortgages, all of these things are gonna get progressively more expensive if we follow the direction in which Jerome Powell stated today, which is seven hikes in 2022, seven hikes. Now, if we do have this, this then would be a sign to restructure any type of debt that you may have, any credit card debt, uh, refinance a home equity line of credit or potentially an adjustable rate mortgage, looking at all these options and playing defense here. Because in this inflationary environment, what's generally gonna happen is that you are going to want to have cash. You definitely will want to have cash so that you can go out there and buy things. Go out there and buy things because they're going to be more expensive. If you don't have the cash on hand, then it may be harder to actually go out there and acquire the things that you really need for a day-to-day -day survival. Another thing that this could also signal is that if you need, let's say, shoes or toothpaste or whatever you need over the next three months or six months, now might be the time to buy them simply because what would be a better investment? Speculating in the stock market or speculating in a crypto investment hoping to make 10 or 20% or knowing that more than likely you'll be able to buy something today and in six months it's gonna be 10 or 20% more. So you're essentially gonna make that gain in the purchase of the things that you're already gonna definitely need. So there's really almost no downside. I guess the only downside would be is if inflation did not occur, which is very unlikely then you would simply just have these items at the price in which you'd buy them for today. So very, very little risk, very limited risk. A couple things also that I think could be very interesting for the real estate market is that if we have supply chain issues and lumber and you know, in China, for example, we get a lot of uh, HVACs, we get a lot of uh, supplies that we need for building of single family homes. 
and these supplies may be harder to come by. So if they are harder to come by, it means that the home builder and the landlord, the investor, is gonna have to carry that property for a longer period of time, taking away even more profits. The, a lot of these investors have been suffering over the last couple of years as labor costs have been increasing and material costs have been increasing. Well, now we're gonna have mortgage rates increase. So what's that gonna mean is that purchasing power of buyers is gonna be shrinking. Meanwhile, the expenses and the, all the debt associated with building these homes will be increasing, meaning that there's gonna be a lot more uncertainty, more than likely, in the development of a lot of new single family homes. What that also could convey is that insurance costs, they're gonna be taking this into consideration when they're underwriting properties, saying, hey, it's getting harder to get these same materials, it's taking longer to get them, and because of that, if a fire were to occur in your property or anything were to occur in your property and we had to put you in a rental at our cost, instead of you staying there for three months or 60 days, you may have to stay there for nine months because of the supply chain bottlenecks, meaning that all of that additional cost we would have to assume, which we're not gonna do, we're just gonna push to the consumer by increasing rates. So we could start to see increased home insurance and increased auto insurance. We could see increases across the board in all of these segments. And then another thing also is that a lot of small businesses right now that have been struggling in the last two years, they're sitting there now struggling, a lot of which have debt. What are they gonna do when their debt increases? Well, they're gonna increase prices because they need to offset this debt. Meaning inflation almost, to me, it's almost guaranteed that we're gonna to start to see more and more and more inflation. Last year, the CPI was about 7%. They said it's gonna to go to about 10% this year. So if you factor that in, they're saying essentially a 17% CPI. Well, most economists, most people would probably agree that inflation last year was about 18 or 20%. So we could be stepping into this situation where everything's gonna get much more expensive and borrowing costs are going to follow it. So this could be a situation where it might not happen overnight, but it could be a problem as we step into the next three months, six months, we slowly start to see this opportunity. That's why I personally believe a great thing to do would be to have a lot of options. So you might wanna have some precious metals, gold, silver. You may wanna have real estate, potentially land. Uh, you want to have things that you can uh, take custodial ownership of and you can sell easily if you need to and you obviously wanna have a lot of dollars. So you, the more options that you have, the better. I believe that this is going to be the biggest wealth transfer in human history, and we're all gonna be living through this. A lot of people are in denial about just how big this wealth transfer actually is going to be. But if you look at all of this new innovation that's also taking place, all of these massive changes that are occurring in the economy, this is inevitable. This is inevitable. Smart investors are aware of what's going on. They are planning accordingly. They understand that this is a guarantee. This is a guarantee that we are going to see this wealth transfer. We're already seeing it. We're already seeing, you know, in Tampa, Florida, for example, 30% rent increases, 30%. Miami, most expensive city in America. I mean, average rents increased 18%. A lot of people think it's the landlord, but you look at, look at everything as a whole. Everything is getting more expensive. Everything. Food, gasoline, I mean, everything. So of course it's gonna be more expensive to rent as well because it's gonna be more expensive for these property owners and investors to insure these properties, to fix these properties, maintain these properties, hire laborers for these properties. Everything's just gonna continue going up. That's why smart investors are aware, they understand they're building out a defensive portfolio and they're making smart and calculated positions now and in the future to hedge themselves from all of this uncertainty that we are going to definitely see in this economy. When you print the amount of money that we print over the last two years, it's a signal. It's a signal that the dollar is in very, very big trouble and that we now are stepping into a place, this country is stepping into a place where we could be challenged in a very, very big way by a variety of other countries, all of which would bring even more chaos and turmoil to the everyday American. This is the time to buckle up. This is the time to research, do your homework and study and be defensive. Don't speculate in the market and invest in things that you do not understand. You know, great, a great quote is, if you invest in things you don't understand, you're not investing, you're speculating. Speculators generally lose money. So this isn't the time to speculate, especially in an environment where who knows what could happen in the next six months. Look at how much change has happened in this economy, in this world, the last two years. 
Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. We're not going back to 2018. We're going into 2022 and 2023, and you got to be prepared for it. Drop your comments below. Where do you see the U.S. economy going in 2022? How do you think these seven interest rate hikes will hold in this economy? Are you consolidating credit card debt or consumer debt? Do you think that this is you know, the time to do it? Or do you think that you know, everything's just going to be completely fine? I'm curious as to what you guys think. Drop it in the comment section. I'll respond to everybody. Subscribe here. Consider subbing on my second YouTube channel. And if you have young children, my young son has a YouTube channel as well. It's an educational channel. We're intending to bring a private school education to him on his platform to help educate and you know provide value to a lot of young children. You know, as of today, what we're seeing is Netflix and all of this junk that a lot of kids are consuming, which I believe is doing more harm than good. So we're doing everything that we can possibly do to uh, to provide as much value as possible. Also, if you're on TikTok, subscribe to me over there. I post four or five times a day. All right, guys, catch you later.